positional chess mastery how to deploy the pieces in the end game and in the late middle game and in the middle game is the key to become a grandmaster or improve your level of play to to a higher uh, degree so if you want to master chess this is an essential skill we're gonna teach you it to teach it today uh, and um, better pay attention this is not easy stuff uh, well it looks easy but it's difficult to do uh, so so pay attention uh, we're gonna see a game with Anand versus uh, Aronian as high level uh, it's a rapid game from global chess league in, in Dubai and Anand is uh, able to dominate uh, Aronian's uh, bishop and keeping his pieces locked in in a very instructive way. So let's get into this rather long and very instructive game. I'm sure you're going to learn something. You're going to be better to deploy your pieces in the middle game after watching this. So let's go. Anand plays e4. He is an e4 player. He sometimes dabbles with other openings, but this is his go-to style. He likes to attack. This is the Ray Lopez or Spanish opening, a serious opening that everybody should know at some point. This is the main line so far. And here uh, Aronian plays the b5, that is sort of the modern Müller or the modern, uh, what, what do you call it, Akangel or, or something like that. It's, it's a serious opening, it's, it's definitely uh, correct. Uh, Shirov has played this a lot and it's, it's popular on the top level. It was also popular here in, in Dubai. Um, there's a lot of theory after, for, say, something like a4. Anyway, Black uh, de deploys the bishop here to keep it on this active diagonal instead of having it on this rather passive square down here. But of course, sometimes it will be missing on the king side where the dark squares will become weaker when the bishop is on the other side. C3, that is part of White's plan in the Ray Lopez, build a strong center with D4. Notice that he's not afraid of knight takes E4, D4, and something will be bad in the E-file, you get a lot of attack. So this is what basically Black is hoping to do. If Black was left to his own devices here, he would play something like this. The knight who's blocking the C-pawn, he would get here and here and uh, have a nice uh, sort of... Um, harmonious setup where the bishop can go either way or maybe even here and so on or here is also another square so that's rather nice white has to sort of disturb black and this is one of the way to do it notice here there's not a pawn hanging on e4 after this uh, you have a problem so this is is, is definitely not good uh, there's a double attack on the knight here Okay, knight d2, uh, well, no, now we defend, but well, black played bishop d4, pinning the knight here and sort of reinforcing the attack on this. We see that black is attacking uh, uh, this square a lot and basically also with the bishop, but what, it just ignores it with this move. Okay, you say, what, what's going on here? Well, the problem is that after say something like this this seems to be hanging the problem is is something like this move check king takes bishop takes bishop takes stepping out of the pin check and uh, of course if black could play this move he would be fine it's not possible to do this move so he has to move the king or play d5 and white will get this back and this king here is exposed. So this is the sort of the tactics behind uh, Anand's move. And if you know Anand, you know he sees this like, it's, it's just like flowing out of him. So it's, it's, <laughs> it, it is, uh, probably it was prepared as well. This is another thing. Okay, so black just castle say, okay, nothing to, to do here. You could play rook b8 uh, to, to be able to take back with the rook. Instead, uh, we get this structure here. What can you say? Well, in general, you don't want 
double pawns. Uh, but uh, it's it's often not a big problem for black in this situation. The one problem could be this square that you cannot attack with a pawn. That's uh, that's one thing. Uh, another thing is is that this bishop has gone uh, sort of sailing away. Uh, you could take, but then this bishop become very strong. So instead, um, well, white plays queen e2, uh, covers here. Black could take here, but it looks like white is better with the bishop and so on, and and is first to to get into the d file. Black so black hurries here, and here comes an interesting move. Uh, g4 attacking the bishop. Um, well, the problem with this move is obvious for the trained eye. This square is gone uh, because uh, there is no black squared bishop to cover this square. So, so it it is a little bit uh, risky positionally. In general, I'm very afraid to play moves like g4 without the dark squared bishop. In general, I'm very, uh, I'm sort of uh, not very eager to play g4 uh, because it weakens the position, but sometimes you have to play it, but it's, it's less nice when you, <laughs> you actually have this problem here. Okay, so, the, but, but another thing is this bishop is now, it, it is cover attacking here, but it's also not uh, not sort of very active. It, that's all it can do, and sometimes you can even trap it. Uh, so knight goes out here, ready to take this. Sometimes it will get into f5. Uh, sometimes it will go, just go back. And knight a5. Here an interesting moment that sees that, that Anne is clearly playing in a positional manner against this bishop. So he wants to dominate this bishop. So he plays f three that looks weird right uh, but uh, the, the thing is this bishop has a lot of uh, a long way home before it gets a knight white has some nice knights that can um, sort of dominate the game uh, one of the plans he's got is knight d2 knight e3 and uh, at some point sit here where the knight will be very dominating black uh, decides to get rid of the white squared bishop um, Get it over, and black white takes back with the a pawn. Uh, the idea here is, of course, that uh, we get the a file to attack, uh, and we get a, a more um, sort of interesting pawn structure on this side, where where white will be able to sort of uh, freeze black's structure. Knight uh, goes away. One of the plans here is to play f6 and get the bishop back. The problem with that move is, of course, that then the knight will be strong on f5. So it's not yeah, so easy. Well, black was planning uh, this maneuver. Knight c5, knight e6, and we see this. By the way, by the way, very important, very important. When, when you get this kind of structure with these kind of holes here, on on, uh, on this square, you should usually try to get a knight to control that square as fast as possible. Uh, so start. Uh, this is the the most important plan you got. So get get on get on with it. Uh, this is what you need to do. Um, so uh, here uh, the the knight is aiming for c5. So white prevents it and also uh, freezes this pawn. Uh, Rook goes away. We are fighting over the D file, but it's also clearing away the square for for this man maneuver. Uh, White also uh, gets in here, and Knight gets to this square. So, what is White's plan? It's basically this and this, and um, and basically playing around this guy, trying to dominate it. Uh, knight goes here, knight goes here, and here black sort of panics, um, he plays knight f4. The thing is, he's not very happy that white will go knight f3, knight d5 with a very dominating position. So it looks like white, black is, is, is about to get outplayed positionally, so he decides to change the structure. Uh, you cannot allow this knight here, it's, it's attracting this, so you have to take it. Um, this did not improve uh, this guy's uh, foreseeable future, 
but it did uh, take away uh, these squares for the white knight that now is sort of also a little bit weird but it gave it another square can you find that square well it's here a very dominated uncontested place in the center where you can control a lot of things so that's where the knight is heading now that it cannot get to this square right make it another color so the, the we're going for the orange square first there is a little tactic here take and black cannot take back with the rook uh, because this one here is hanging so you have to take back with the queen and queen d2 uh oh attacking here and attacking here so i'm indirectly attacking here as well uh exchanging is not really nice uh for instance if you take here knight here then black is white is simply ready for this and here and uh and this one will be weak and white has no weaknesses you will have a very strong knight and it will be unpleasant for black first of all this one is, is also threatening here due to the pin on the rook down here so black decides to play queen c7 uh, preparing this move so white goes in here here black uh, needs to pay very attention uh, uh, sort of be careful white is is planning queen d6 probably and black decides okay i need to to do something with my queen make my king so uh, to to get a, an air hole the problem is this move is not so good because of this move oops and here uh, black realized that the plant bishop takes h5 runs into queen d5 you can just see it here attacking the rook attacking the bishop and basically winning so uh, you, you have to go back this was not the plan and this one is getting even even worse uh, than it was before so h5 was clearly a mistake from a slightly worse uh, or maybe clearly worse position i would definitely prefer to be white but these guys are very good at drumming up counterplay so you can't say it's over until it's over um queen d6 nice little move uh this pawn is hanging there's no counterplay and so on and after if if for instance you try to go with something that is i would probably just take here something like this and rook d2 and he'll be ready for uh, for something over here that will be very unpleasant or queen e5 or something queen f6 maybe even i don't know this is 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 is, is not uh, possible to defend this and white does and black does not have any counterplay here so this is is he has to take and the, the ending is of course a total disaster for black uh, the bishop is out of the game here this pawn is is weak and white is uh, this one is weak as well we'll make it orange and white is a clear pawn up this guy over here uh, which is not uh, a useless pawn it's a strong pawn and and black has the problem that his bishop is very very far away from from getting any kind of uh, counterplay why this is as uh, still having some plans so but black found a way to get some sort of counterplay take and f5 so that was uh, the idea uh, and that was uh, smart so what should white do here well if you notice the the headline was domination so what is dominating here it's of course to play e5 well we are still looking at you uh, my friend here bishop with a view uh, that will have very very big problems getting out and preventing counterplay of any kind here so uh, and the obvious move here is of course king f2 controlling uh, this square not giving away any counterplay i've said this before in um, in dm talks and i can say it again one of the uh, marks of good technique is not allowing counterplay keeping control is key for winning these kind of positions uh, if you do that you will win here white is a pawn up and this one is weak, weak. this one will be weak afterwards uh, okay, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get yellow. 
and this one is weak and this and this guy down here is in trouble this king is also in, in trouble and the rook does not have any way the rook needs to be active but it cannot get into the game king getting out knight getting out and notice this this is a key uh, concept in uh, good end game technique do not rush uh, if you are having a winning position just don't allow any counterplay. Uh, the knight is uh, the, the maneuver that was good before is still very good here. It might go here, but it might also go here and uh, black. And basically, it would be nice to uh, to just go here, win this pawn, and uh, keeping that pawn, keeping all important squares under control, and most of all, keeping that guy completely locked up. And notice that if, if black was to play something with this, then white will still have an extra H pawn. So there is, it's nice to have a spare. Rook E6, uh, total uh, sort of resignation. And, uh, and that's the weird thing here, because this must be winning for white. Uh, after all, uh, something like this looks just totally winning. Um, you could be afraid, but here you just go here and uh, after something like this, trying to, to, to sneak in, you will just go back and uh, go back and play oops, and go and play b3 and then you probably need to play some 992, take this one and you will you will win everything. It's, a, it's not uh, you can also win the a pawn with something like this here and take take here and the knight will always get out here so this is 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 absolutely winning uh, and then preferred to have his rook uh, active and was of course very happy with this maneuver we talked about this also looks like it's not so easy here comes this move and black noticed something here take was the idea the problem is this move and that's something that anand is very good at calculating uh, these kind of things this the the problem here for black is is this move and after this we have a very nice uh, family check as they would call it um, where of course the rook is is dropping off and black can resign so he cannot take that was he has to play king h8 and white takes here uh, very 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 nice um rook h6 uh, rook h4 is not winning it working and here a very little nice move very typical and and h4 oh yeah uh the thing is 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 again a little trick and check and after this one we again have the family check or uh, and and black can resign so after h4 is of course completely winning uh, of course this is rabbit chess something could happen but white is a uh, clear pawn up has total control of the position the bishop even though it's getting out is still bad and uh i, I think h5 i kind of like it having on on black i don't know why um but this is of course clearly winning um and uh, and here uh, the easy way to win is probably to go for the rook ending and that's uh, that's something because the, the bishop did get active but white is 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 clearly winning here um this the the f pawn is weak the a pawn is weak the b pawn is weak and black will be able to get one pawn but white will probably win two and the king will not get into the game it will actually be a liability down here on h7 so i think this is like plus six or something and uh if, if you let the computer run a little so uh easily winning uh the a pawn is dropping immediately Instead, uh, he played king d5, which is definitely not a good idea because the bishop is sort of getting out. It's still winning, but it's little less obvious now. And the king is also getting out. And this is the kind of thing you, you don't really want. Um, and this, by the way, this is, is this typical uh, mistake, rook f6. You have to go for the far end to be able to give checks and, and make the most of the range of your pieces. Um, actually, the check on e, e, the e-file gives some, some chances to, to make some counterplay. And what you're hoping for is winning this pawn without losing this one. And so be able to, to get that, that going. Um, 
uh, and here is is uh, it's not possible black is white is, is getting the pawn and uh, and thank you and of course the h pawn is probably a goner still it's not so easy no, notice this little uh, typical anan trick um, the, the, the thing is, 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 is this, and the rook ending again is completely winning. Very typical. So king h7, h7, and black did manage to, to get a little bit of counterplay here, rook f6. Um, of course, taking the the rook ending is comp the is comp uh, the bishop versus knight ending and completely lost. So he has to keep his rook. And uh, they are they're moving around a little bit here. And now to notice a little trick here. Check. And rook c5. If he gave, if he play rook c5 first, he, black would be able to take c5 with check. There's no reason to do that. So, uh, like this, and white is two clear pawns up. This is totally winning now. So we will not spend much time on it. Of course, they will fight. B5, b6, and he did calculate it all the way through here uh, something like uh, like this is is and and here and 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 can win with a, a queen against the rook of course we saw that by the way uh, Carlton won that against Nepomnichi in in the same tournament so this was a very nice hard fought struggle we saw that Anand was able to almost keep uh, Liv Livon Aronian uh, under uh, lock the whole game, uh, getting the bishop to uh, to the weak squares, uh, to to the to sort of a, a bad dead end. Uh, we we see it here, where where this guy here is is turns out to be a weakness the whole game. The structure um, and then also managed to to make the structure look bad for black and uh, and and a very good game because uh, this is the way you want to play if you want to to become a very strong player you need to be able to do this this is sort of the craft of chess uh, if you look at chess as not a, a game but as a sort of a a, a craftsman thing that you 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 learn the skills set to to be able to win these kind of games. Uh, then you will also uh, work at it in a different way. I hope you like this video from GM Talks, and I also hope you will subscribe to the email list and uh, maybe even donate something to the channel and like and share and so on uh, i will be making a video just for the paying members uh, without with my ready repertoire that is uh, i think it's pretty good repertoire actually um, so if you're interested in that you have to to cough up um, this was dm talks thank you for uh, watching this video